Hey everyone, Tarekith here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick first look at the new Sequential Pro 3 Special Edition. Um, I've had this one about 48 hours now, um, but with everybody being on lockdown here in Washington State, um, I've had nothing but time to play with this and kind of explore it quite a bit. Um, I've also read the manual a few times before it arrives, so I was familiar with how it worked uh, already. Um, anyway, so I want to share a few quick thoughts on it um, after a couple of days of heavy use. Um, I'll be doing a full review at some point, but as always, those take me a while. I like to really spend a lot of time with it before I give you my thoughts on it. Um, to start with, physically, it's an incredibly well-built synth. Um, the Special Edition in particular, I've been really impressed with. Uh, the hinge is solid. It's well-designed, like the little stand on the back that they use to hold it up. Um, it's minimal, but it works really good. It feels really solid. Uh, build quality is excellent. Uh, the wood itself it actually is a slightly different color than I expected um, in a good way. I actually like this more. It's kind of more muted, almost got like a grayish tint to it, um, which I think looks really classy. Um, it's not quite as bright as some of the other woods I've seen online and other ones, so uh, that might be a little bit of a variability. Uh, the keys feel good. Um, they're pretty solid. They're a little heavier weighted for like a synth action. Um, personally, I prefer that. Um, this is one of the better feeling keyboards I've used, so very happy with that. Uh, everything is metal. Um, the regular uh, Pro 3 has like a sticker overlay with all the graphics on it, and these are actually screen printed on, which I think looks really nice. Um, the knobs themselves, like I, one thing I had read about uh, before I got this was that they were really stiff and kind of hard to turn, and they are actually surprisingly really stiff and kind of hard to turn. Um, they feel really solid. I don't think it's like a defect. I think that, I don't know, there's just like feels like there's a lot of grease inside them or something like to give them a lot of resistance. Um, the more I'm using them, uh, the more they are loosening up some, but um, initially I was kind of surprised at how hard it was to turn some of the knobs. Again, I actually would rather they were more firm than less firm. It just feels higher quality. Um, I just thought I would point that out because a lot of people have commented about that online. Uh, the cutoff knob is different. Um, this nice big chunky knob is super smooth. Um, no problems with that whatsoever. But um, yeah, some of these other ones, like you definitely have to put like a little bit of finger muscle in them to get them to turn. Uh, it hasn't really slowed me down from tweaking it when I'm playing it and stuff like that, but uh, again, just thought I'd point it out. Uh, the touch drift is really responsive. Uh, the mod wheels look great. Um, my only kind of real complaint about like the actual look of the synth is that um, sometimes on certain patches, like the sequencer buttons, anything, these red buttons can be like really bright. Um, I tend to like my studio a lot darker than it is even right now. Um, so like at night I find those like really, really glaring and kind of hard on the eyes. Um, it's not as bad as some synths. Some of those like white, super bright LEDs, like on, uh, you know, the access virus and things like that are way worse. But, um, I do wish there was a way to kind of dim the, the lights a little bit, uh, just to make it easier on your eyes when it's like a darker studio. Uh, sound quality wise, uh, I'm going to go through some audio examples after I talk about this. So you can kind of hear it. Um, it definitely tends towards the more like metallic and darker sounds. I, I find, at least for me, like when I start tweaking it, um, not even metallic, more like distorted on the edge of breaking up. There's so many ways to add noise and grit and dirt uh, on this synth that it's hard to kind of not like go after those. At least now it's new, it's easy and fun to do. Um, it's got dedicated distortion, you can overdrive the filter. This tune feedback, which has just crazy things. Um, just, the, just the levels in the mixer, if you start turn, turning those up kind of high, um, you'll start getting some distortion. So there's a lot of ways you can really take the sound and break it up. I don't think that's the only thing this can do, but I think it's really, really good at those kinds of sounds. So we're going to see a lot of people using it like that. Um, I know just the sequences and stuff that I've come up with so far kind of have tend to favor that kind of sound, which for me is fine. I like industrial music. Uh, this is great. I think Skinny Puppy used a pro one early on in their days, so I'm not surprised I kind of dig in that sort of same sound. Uh, the sequencer itself is amazing on this. I think it could almost be like a standalone product. Um, you get the first three tracks are dedicated to note information. Uh, the first one is just like the actual which notes you're playing. Uh, the second one is like the duration of the notes. Uh, the third one is ratcheting, so you can do like little stutters and fills and things like that. Uh, the fourth one's pre-wired to cut off. Uh, and then after that, you've got five through 16 uh, other tracks that you can sequence things on. Uh, they all share the same length, uh, but you can change length per step and things like that, which is kind of handy. Uh, recording notes, editing notes, editing controller data um, is really, really simple. Assigning controller data is really simple on this. Um, one of the things I really, really am impressed with this synth and why it makes it so much fun to just 
go patching crazy more than I normally would is how easy it is to assign things to the mod matrix. You just hold the source button, uh, turn a knob or press a button like an LFO button, hold the destination button and say what you want to assign it to, say cut off, and that's it, like the assignment's already made. And there's a, uh, a mount knob right there um, by the source and destination buttons. Um, it's so easy to use. Like I, I use way more modulation slots than I normally would. And it's really simple to access that menu again to get back to whatever things you want to tweak like after the fact. Um, there's all kinds of modulation uh, destinations in here. You can actually modulate the effect, uh, modulate the effects parameters, which is really neat. Um, a lot of synths, you can't do that. I like that. Uh, speaking of the effects, uh, the effects in this sound really good. Uh, let's see. I particularly like the reverb actually compared to like say my OB6, um, which is nice and clean and whatnot, but this actually does some really interesting like long reverbs. <laughs> It's like a super plate reverb, they call it. Um, so yeah, the reverb's really cool. There's a couple of delays in there. The delays aren't anything special, but they work. Um, you get three parameters this time per effect, uh, unlike, unlike the OB6, you only have two. Um, so that's pretty nice. And like I said, all those can be modulatable. Um, I've gotten some really, really crazy sounds that way. Um, yeah, so, so far, I think it's been a really fun synth to use. It's really easy to use, too, I find. Like, the manual seems kind of long, but the actual basics in the manual, you know, maybe like 40 pages. And, you know, most of it's common sense. Like, the display is really good at organizing information, only showing you what you need. There's not a ton of menu diving to do. Um, even, like, all the global parameters just in the list, and there's, like, I don't know, 52 entries, but it's really easy to find what you're looking for in that list at the same time. And that's like an extreme example. Like you don't have pages and pages of filter parameters and things like that. Um, it's all here on the front panel. Um, I know quite a few people, like I self-included at first, were like, wow, I wish they would do like just like a desktop version of this without the keyboard. Um, but to be honest, they have all these controls on there. Like this would be like a really huge desktop um, device. Um, obviously still smaller than with the keyboard, but um, I'm not sure how much sense it would make to make just a desktop unit this big. I mean, you obviously want all the same maps on here. It's what makes it so wonderful to use. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll try to address them in my long review. Um, I will play through a couple of the sounds I've done so far in this. So you can kind of hear some of the stuff I've worked on. Um, again, if you're looking for like quiet, clean, things like that, like these are definitely like distorted, dirty sequences and just crazy random noise and kind of demonstrate how this thing can, you can really, really just fuck with the sound a lot on this and break it up and it does some interesting things. Um, so yeah, I'll play some of those to kind of end this video and uh, put your comments below and I will address them in the full review. Thanks.